Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, we are Arno and we make videos and an entire platform to help students like you around the world get ready for the Duolingo English test. In today's video, I'm going to teach you a simple yet highly effective template for write about the photo questions. I'm very excited for today's video. This is probably our most requested video of all time. So I really think it's gonna help you to raise your score on the Duolingo English test. We have a lot to cover, so let's get started. This template consists of three sentences. Your first sentence should be a general description of the photo. This is going to be the easiest sentence for you to write most likely because writing a general description of a photo is something that comes very naturally to us. There are three ways that you can begin this first sentence, and they are, this image shows, this image depicts, and in this image we can see. I would recommend that you memorize all three and use all three for each of the three write about the photo questions that you will see on the test. This is because using diverse vocabulary and not repeating the same words will get you more points on the DET. Let's look at some examples of how exactly to write this first sentence, the general description of an image. This image shows. Can you think of what this image shows? You could say something like, this image shows people sitting by the side of a river in a city. Next one. This image depicts. What do you think this image depicts? I said, this image depicts a coffee shop. Very simple. And lastly, in this image we can see. What do you see in this image? I said, in this image we can see a house next to a lake or river in the mountains. Okay, so that's the first sentence. Remember, it's a general description of the image. In the second sentence, you are going to focus on a detail. So you want to focus in or zoom in, if you will, on a specific aspect of the image and describe it in detail. You should write about what stands out to you. So many students have asked me, well, what should I describe in detail? And the answer is you should describe in detail what you notice first. Because you only have 60 seconds to write about the photo, you can't spend time debating what aspect of the photo you should write about. You need to spend your time actually describing the photo, not thinking about what you should describe. So that's why it's important that you just focus on the detail that jumps out to you, that you notice first. Here are questions that you can use to help you identify details that you can describe. What are people doing? What are people wearing? How old are people? Where are things located? What color are things? What size are things? What are things made of? What are things not? So you can always say that something is not something else. That is a way to describe something that can be quite useful. I'll show you an example of that later on. So what you should do with these questions is practice with them so that on the test, these questions are in your mind, ready to go, and helping you quickly identify the detail to focus on and describe. 
So a great way to practice with these questions is on practice questions in Arno. We give you unlimited practice questions for every question type for free, including the write about the photo and speak about the photo question type. So that's a great way to practice with these questions. Another thing to note about this second sentence is that unlike the first sentence and unlike the third sentence that we will see later, it's impossible to give you specific vocabulary that will work for every single image. And this is because the details in every image are going to be different. And the things that you notice in each image are going to be different. So for this second sentence, you have to be more flexible. In some ways that makes it easier because it means that you can talk about any detail that you notice in the image. But in some ways this makes it harder because you can't memorize specific beginnings to this second sentence like you can for the first sentence, which we already looked at, and that you will see for the third sentence. However, we have a ton of other videos on our YouTube channel that will teach you vocabulary and other tips that will help you, especially with this second sentence. So not to worry, you can still watch those videos and you can still have a ton of vocabulary and strategies to help guide you with this second sentence. All right, let's look at some examples of how we could write this second sentence for some images. Let's take this one to start. So the first sentence could be, this image shows two people taking a walk along the river. The second sentence could be any number of things. So I could say, in the background, I can make out a large bridge. In the background is a very useful uh, vocabulary term for the second sentence. Or, the man is wearing a black jacket or sweater and black shorts. I can zoom in on what the man is wearing. Or, I can zoom in on what the woman is wearing. The woman is wearing a white long sleeve shirt and black pants. Or, I could zoom in on what is next to the people. I could say, for example, next to them is lush grass and a large tree. So any of these four sentences are perfectly appropriate second sentences. Let's look at another example. So for this one, the first sentence could be something like this. This image depicts people walking along a narrow city street. And for my second sentence, here are all of the options that I could have. Just a few of the options actually, because there's so many things that you could say. I could say, the, young, the three young women closest to the camera are wearing big dresses and white blouses. So I could zoom in again on what the people are wearing. I could zoom in on the buildings that I see. The buildings have intricate walls and roofs that appear to be in a traditional style. Or I could zoom in on what I see in the background or in the distance. And, and I could say, in the distance, we can make out tall modern buildings. Again, all of these sentences would be appropriate for my second sentence in this template. Here's another example. In this image, there are no people, and these types of images are more difficult to describe, by the way. For the first sentence, I could say, in this image, we can see a train going through a city. And for my second sentence, I could have, the train is small and white. I can zoom in on the train. The train is not underground, but rather on a track raised above the street. Or I could zoom in on the buildings in the background. There are not many lights on in the buildings behind the train. So to reiterate for this second sentence, you have a lot of possibilities for what you can zoom in on and describe. And that's why this second sentence, I think, 
really gives you the opportunity to use advanced vocabulary that you may have because you can decide which thing to focus in on and to use advanced vocabulary for. You're not stuck describing only the main thing in the photograph. Okay, the third and final sentence. In this sentence, you are going to take a guess about why things are the way they are. In short, in this final sentence, you are going to ask yourself why. So this is where you can use your imagination to speculate. Speculate means to make a guess. Speculating is great because it allows you to use more diverse vocabulary. You, when you speculate, it means you don't just have to describe what you can see in the image, but you can speculate about what people are doing or what they were doing before or what they're going to do after or all these other things that are not present in the photo exactly. So this will become clear as we go through the examples. And like with sentence one, there are specific ways that you can start sentence number three. And they are perhaps, presumably, and it may be the case that. So like we talked about for the first sentence, I would recommend that you memorize all three of these beginnings and you use each of them on each of the three right about the photo questions because that diversity of vocabulary using different words will help you to get a higher score. These three words all mean approximately the same thing. In essence, these three words all indicate that you are speculating, that you are making a guess. So let's take this image. The first sentence could be, this image shows two people taking a walk along a river. The second sentence can be, in the background, I can make out a large bridge. And now for the third sentence, I'm going to ask myself, why? Why are things the way they are? Well, I could ask myself why about many aspects of this photo. Why does it look so beautiful? Why is everything so green? Or I could ask myself, why are these people out taking a walk? And to answer that question, I could say, perhaps they are a couple who is taking a walk on a Sunday afternoon. Here's another example. We saw this image before. For the first sentence, I could say something like, this image depicts people walking along a narrow city street. The buildings have intricate walls and roofs that appear to be in a traditional style. And now I can ask myself, why? So I could ask myself, why are the young women wearing these matching dresses or dresses that look very similar? Or I could ask myself, why do people have umbrellas? Or I could ask myself, well, why do the buildings look like this? They don't look very modern. They look traditional. And that would allow me to finish my response with this sentence. Presumably, this is the historic area of a town or city that has been preserved. So presumably means to make an assumption. So it is saying very clearly that I don't know for sure if this is a historic area. However, these buildings look very old. It looks like they would need a lot of care and attention to keep them looking like this. So I am going to assume or presume that this is the historic area of a town or city. So a very neat way to express that idea is with the word presumably. So the sentence again, presumably this is the historic area of a town or city that has been preserved. And here's the image of the train that we saw from before. 
The first sentence could be something like this. In this image, we can see a train going through a city. Then I could zoom in on the buildings and say, there are not many lights on in the buildings behind the train. I could then speculate about why there are not many lights on in the building. And I could say, it may be the case that this photo was taken at the end of the workday, after everyone has gone home. So let's recap this three sentence template that you can use for write about the photo questions. The three sentences in this template are, one, the general description, two, the focus on a detail, and finally, you should ask yourself, why are things the way they are? So this is a very easy template to remember, and you have specific vocabulary for each of the sentences, especially if you practice with this strategy and develop the habit of using the vocabulary and noticing good details to describe, you will be able to get very good at picture description very quickly. Let's now go through some examples in which I use this template on some more images so that you can see the template in action. Here's the first example. For the general description, I could write, this image shows a young girl eating an apple or a piece of bread. For number two, the focus on a detail. I could say, this little girl has large, striking blue eyes. So that was the detail that I noticed. She has these big, beautiful, striking eyes. And finally, I could write, why? Well, why is she eating an apple or a piece of bread? Perhaps she is hungry after she was outside playing with her friends. And right there, three sentences, a very good high scoring response. Example number two, general description. This image depicts a woman brewing coffee. Number two, focus on a detail. She is wearing a red shirt and jeans. I decided to focus on what she was wearing. That's what caught my attention. And finally, number three, why? Well, why is she brewing coffee? Presumably, she works at a coffee shop and she is preparing an order for a customer. Example number three, general description. In this image, we can see a basket of colorful fruit and flowers. Sentence number two, let's zoom in on a detail. I noticed the fruit in the basket. There are peaches, cherries, and apricots, and they all look delicious. And finally, why? Why does this picnic basket with the fruit and the flowers exist? I said, it may be the case that this is a picnic basket someone arranged for an afternoon outside. Example number four, general description. This image shows a man hiking with a flashlight. Number two, focus on a detail. In the background are impressive snow-covered mountains. Why? Well, why is this man hiking with a flashlight? That's what I wondered. And I speculated that perhaps he started his hike very early in the morning before the sun has come up. 
Number five, general description. This image depicts a modern office building. Focus on a detail. The building is made of concrete and it is open to the outside. And why? Well, I was wondering why is it open to the outside? Which led me to say, presumably this is an office building in a warm place where you can be outside for much of the year. So that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you found it helpful, I would really appreciate if you would like and subscribe. It takes just a moment for you, but it really makes a big difference for us. And it will help students like you to find this helpful content so that they can get a great score on the DET as well. If you want to prepare for more aspects of the DET, you should check out the other videos on our channel, as well as head over to Arno to create your free account and get all those practice questions for all the question types for free. All right, so um, some videos are gonna pop up here that will help you in particular with picture description, so be sure to check those out if you wanna keep studying this topic. All right, so that's it for this video, and I will see you next time. Happy studying, bye-bye.